All right, so you guys have not been updated in a while and there's a lot that has been going on with my vehicle. Today we are replacing the brakes and the rotors. When I took it to the brake shop, they said I would need new calipers and two like shops were quoting me like $1,100. I decided to try to figure it out myself. Uh, the brakes and the rotors cost me 178. I ended up ordering every part I would need because I don't own anything. And it's like $500 in total, which truthfully, I mean, these parts are going to last me for the rest of my life while I work on this, any vehicle I ever own. So I took the shot and we're going to figure this out together. Again, I'm not going to be like a step-by-step -step guide on how to do this. I will show you what not to do. And hopefully you don't come across any mistakes that I might make on my vehicle. So this is more of a like, don't do this. And I'll walk you through it. The videos that I'm using, I will always link below so you guys can take a look if you guys want to see another perspective in case I don't show anything. Um, aside from that, let me update you with everything that's been going on with my vehicle. So for starters, we we do need new tires. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do the, the crime and get all season tires. I'm going to get Michelin Pilot Sport all seasons just because i don't have anywhere to work on my vehicle i'm working on it in a parking lot when it's a hundred degrees out so i'm either i'm either working outside when it's freezing cold below zero degrees it's freezing bro i forgot how cold it is out this should have definitely became a summer project bro i'm literally freezing fahrenheit or i'm outside when it's a hundred but anyway, we're getting new tires. That's going to be like $800. And I was also thinking, which I don't know, you guys can comment down below if you think it's a bad idea or not, on getting like decals for the tires. Don't even bother. I'm editing the video right now. I already thought about it. Doesn't look good. But I do need you to comment on this. Which one of these looks better? This one or this one? Because I'm purchasing a new spoiler and I don't know which one to get. Aside from that though, the actual back yes i did end up crashing it not too long ago maybe like two months ago i don't know if i showed this i i was in a hurry to get to a the baby concert because i was doing video work and okay i got a question for y'all how many y'all need y'all some shit with some popping ah, i needed some shit well uh i backed into this wall and I end up like scuffing up the back. I'm just gonna get rid of the bumper at this point. I don't even think it's worth like keeping it. There's no chance to fix it because it's like cracked underneath here. So I'm just gonna delete it completely. And hey, on the bright side, we'll probably get plus one horsepower. Aside from that though, I did scuff up the rim also. So it's like, I'm, I'm spending money in places I don't even have to be spending. This, I ended up getting like a bit of like hitting the curb a little bit so it's like scuffed it shouldn't be that much honestly i'm hoping that when i reach out they can fix it themselves like under like warranty or something but yeah i desperately desperately need new tires like it is it is insanely low and the alignment is off on the other side aside from that though the car has hasn't given me any real issues and i'm going to go check if i can probably get i don't know if i'm gonna get a, a muffler delete or a resonator delete because I still don't understand how exhaust systems work. So if you're an expert in that, two things. If anyone's an expert in like, or knows about like mufflers and like rim sizes, please hit me up. I'm like in desperate need to figure this out because I, I don't want to get bigger rims without knowing if I should lower the sands first. And I don't know if I should get bigger tires. So I'm like stuck. I'm just stuck right now. And I gotta figure that all out. I got all the parts here. I'm gonna list them all down below so you guys can just click on the on the links to Amazon. There's a bunch, <laughs> but it's not that many parts. I imagine most of you guys have these parts already. The first thing I got, which is a jack stand, it's a two ton jack stand. I have no idea how to use a jack stand. <laughs> so, so while while I attempt to figure this out, um, yeah, two ton jack stand. You're gonna need a jack stand. I got a two ton, I wanted to get three ton. I just wasn't, I couldn't like justify spending another $100. Um, so yeah. Okay, good morning. It is now the next day. It was too hot yesterday to do any work. It is now like five in the morning, roughly. And um, it's a lot cooler out. So we're going to try to get this up and going and get this done before the sun comes out. Um, but 
we have the car jack. I figured out how to use it. I'm, I'm gonna show you from my phone's point of view how to jack up the car. I need to find some jack points on this car actually. And I will show you actually a tool that I found on Amazon. It's like a puck that allows you to not damage your car. Okay, so you will also need a half inch breaker bar. I got a three pack that came with three breaker bars, different sizes. This was like $18 on Amazon. So definitely something you're going to need. I got the 15 inch. I'm not sure if I might swipe this out, swap this out and just get like just one 18 inch. We're figuring it out here. All right, step by step. Get the 18 inch. Just get it. The longer the breaker bar is, the much easier it's going to be and you won't be having to like hop on your vehicle like this. So this part over here is a part that I, that I bought on Amazon that helps you not have this happen when you use your jack sand. It's this right here. So this is the part that goes at that attachment so that way it doesn't end up like crushing it instead and just getting rust on it. I'm not entirely sure where the other parts are, but we're about to find out where the actual jack points are for this. These are the points where I ended up putting them on. I ended up jacking it up from here with that hockey puck that I showed you. So this won't happen if your car isn't like that. Someone already did this to mine and jacked it up before. But we placed them here. Hopefully that's safe. Um, we're gonna start with this side. We're just gonna take the lug nuts off, take the tires, put the tire underneath just for extra safety. And then we can start working on the rotors and the brakes. So to get this thing coming off, you have to take off the pins that are here. There are some springs there. All you're gonna do is pop them off. It's not that hard. There, there's a hole right here that they go attached to and all you do is pull them back and it comes off. They're gonna stay attached, but you just wanna like, like, di like unpin them pretty much from there. Then these are gonna be hanging down here. You're gonna have these pins up here and you're just gonna pull them back. I literally just use this, grabbed on and pulled it back. To push the brake pad that's here where's the brake pad right here it is a brake pad that i just took off it's going to be lodged here you're just going to stick your flathead and just push it out i don't know how i'm going to get the back one out but we'll figure that out right now i don't know if i have to keep these pins so i'm going to put these aside i thought the brake pad was like supposed to be worse though this one isn't even has it didn't even get to the like wear down level look Okay, so I'm having an issue where I can't get the caliper off the actual like rotor or the actual attachment here. I don't know if it's like stuck. Um, it's I'm supposed to just be able to to loosen this up and then it all comes out. And it's already loose, but it just keeps spinning in the same spot. It spins around. It's like I can't tell if it's if it's stuck down here or where it's trapped, but this should just be able to come out and then I should be able to just pull this back. It's not even, cause I was seeing that people were saying like their thing is seized up down here and they can't push it out. I don't even know that yet because I can't, I can't remove this. So I'm, I'm like stuck. All right, so we're actually peanuts. Um, turns out that you're supposed to twist this a lot more. I thought, I had, I was twisting here for at least two minutes straight trying to get this, to, this bolt to come off. You gotta keep going for another five minutes after that. I'm gonna, there's, it, when it looks loose, there's still some ridges at the very end of it that are still locked onto the caliper. And it came off. All right, so now we should be able to slide this right out and it slide right off very, very easily. Um, Okay, so we are moving forward, we're progressing. My brother's working on the other side right now. I just added some WD-40 to the rotor. These things are like rusted on. So I'm going to just give it a couple minutes, then whack it with the hammer, take off that rotor, then we can clean it up, put in the new rotors and everything. I'm gonna repaint the brake calipers again. This is not gonna be a today project. Um, today I was only planning on replacing the rotors and the brakes, but I do need to replace these seals because they're cracking. I don't know if you're able to see that, but these are cracking really badly. Um, 
it's it's right here. It's like it's it's cracking, like concerningly, concerningly bad already. So I need to get replacements for these. But I just my main concern was that my brakes weren't well. So uh, we're gonna need to do that. Camera is overheating, so I'm only gonna record for a little bit more before I stop, and then I'll continue off my phone. Um, we're trying to get this stuff off. These rollers are stuck, but every time I say something's stuck, it always ends up like coming off immediately after. One thing that I'm really concerned about is, I, I imagine the rotors are old, and these brake pads don't really look like they're in the best shape, but the brakes aren't worn down that much, honestly, and I hope that that was what was making the noise, and that that gets fixed. But I'm also at the same time not very sure what the exact issue is that's causing this to make so much noise when I'm going in reverse. It's stuck. It's like stuck, stuck. I'm like beating the hell out of this thing. We're still having an issue removing this nut over here. I can't figure out what's going on. We keep it's like it spins freely right if i were to twist it it spins easier with the other one but it spins freely and it's it's supposed to be like coming out of here and i'm gonna let me show you what i mean let me push this all the way up so you can see what i'm talking about you can see there the ridges we've we just keep spinning it and it won't come out and this is the only thing that we need because everyone has an issue where the clip seizes down here like the caliber seizes down here but that comes off easily for me it's this top part that i can't i just can't pull this thing out if only i could like grab it and then just pull it that way i can just then move this and we can worry about the rotor and the other rotor is still stuck i can't get it off either so um yeah this is where we're at we're at the part where it should be easier and instead it's getting more challenging and challenging to take this out what we ended up doing was since it, it seems to be like stuck in here I'm gonna 0.5 this. So when it's stuck here, what I had to do is I put a flat head while it was inside of here to pry it out while at the same time um, unscrewing it and pulling it out. So that ended up doing the trick because if not, it was just spinning in here freely for a while. We still can't get the rotors off. The only thing that I can think of from watching some videos is putting in um, a nut here, a lug nut here, and then twisting this so this gets pushed out and just pops off. I don't have any of those parts. And it's, it's roughly about, this is the size of it. So I'm, I don't know if I'm gonna go to Home Depot. There is a body shop around the area. So I'm gonna go to them and see if they have any advice. Cause I was whacking it with my hammer and the rubber hammer that I had, the rubber part like completely came off. So I'm kind of out of options now. So I'm gonna try to see if I can find a solution to this. And then I'll update you guys with something that you guys can do that would probably be a lot easier than doing what I'm doing. I also just have these mounted on here. I don't know if that's the best spot, but I couldn't find anywhere else to mount them. Some people like mount them behind this, but I'm not about to go through all of that to take that off just to put that there. I did end up having to replace the caliper. It wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, and I'll show you why. So on this caliper, the seals are still good. It is rusted, and truthfully, I probably should replace both calipers at the same time. But I was running it through with some of the like the mechanics around the area that I that I know, and they were like, honestly, you'll be fine as long as you replace the one that doesn't have the gaskets. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. The one on this side, they were so like when I tell you they they were crumbling, they crumbled the second I touched it. So I ended up buying a new caliber it was only 70 dollars and the guy happened to get it like in an hour he went he was like i can get you that in an hour if you need it and i was like all right fine so he ordered it for me i got it i just now that led to another separate thing that i have to get done now i'm going to paint the calipers because i'm at this point i'm like i might as well you know i i went to home depot like 30 minutes ago i bought the paint i'll make that's gonna be a separate video but i am gonna do it now at this point because there's it just doesn't make sense for me not to do it the only thing that still baffles me, and I mean this in like the most sincerest way possible, the guy who had my vehicle before, I don't know if he's like a peanut or something. He just ended up spray, like spray painting the whole thing there. Like he didn't even bother to take this down. He literally just sprayed it there. Didn't even cover up the back. And it's like, 
do pe I don't know, man. It's just concerning. Aside from this, though, I still can't get these off. So I haven't touched them yet. I put some PB Blaster in it that I went to the auto body shop and they're like, yeah, just get some PB Blaster, get a, a, a sing um, what's it called? A handheld sledgehammer and you should be fine. So I got a sledgehammer and I got PB Blaster. I sprayed these boys down and now we're just waiting for that. Right now, what we're going to do, which is a little separate, because if I'm going to spray paint those, I'm going to take off this bumper and I'm going to keep it without a bumper. Honestly, I like that you can see the tips once this is all like when this is removed. The only bad thing about when it's removed is that I think it's called the, the bash bar, the brace bar that goes here doesn't match. So I bought black spray paint. I'm going to sand it down, spray paint it black, and we're going to have a rear bumper delete. I hope it looks better than what I'm thinking. So we're going to see what happens and I'm gonna take this off and then go back inside because it is 100 degrees out and I'm sweating.